Good day everyone. This is Dave Young with Repro Products. Last week, someone approached me with a problem they were having with their intersection. Now, at the time, this was just an intersection on a simple bike trail, but what you see on the screen here is a close approximation of it. The problem they were having was that their intersection had a big triangular hole in the middle of it, and they didn't know how to fix it. So let's uh, take a look at this and see what we can do about it. Back in Civil 3D, I have my intersection designed, and I see the big, big hole in the middle. No big deal. Why am I getting that? I need to be able to correct that. In this case, that hole is there because the assembly being used for my curb returns and for my lane through the intersection are not targeting correctly. Now, in a perfect world, these curb returns would be targeting this alignment for the secondary road coming in here. But as we can see, they're just maintaining their standard default 12-foot lane width. Same through the, for the through lane as well. Now, why is that? Well, it has to do with the assembly that's being used for the curb returns, and more specifically, the sub-assembly being used. In this case, they were designing a simple bicycle lane, so they went with a simple basic lane subassembly. The drawback to that, if we look at the subassembly properties, parameters, we see nothing in here that indicates it's even capable of targeting center lines or other alignments. The basic assemblies which is pretty much anything on the basic tool set here, they're all pretty much stuck just with their default width. We can't modify those to target anything specific. So we need to substitute a different subassembly in here. I've just found it easier in this case to start over. So here I have essentially the same drawing with nothing in it. But this time, I'm going to be specifying different assemblies. So let's make an intersection real quick. It's asking for the intersection point. We'll select right here and we'll get the wizard that pops up and walks us through this. I want to go with the defaults on the first couple of screens. I'm really not concerned about offset parameters for turn lanes and things like that. But when I come up to this page, here I'm going to make a few changes. So we see that our assemblies to apply are set to the basics, like I had seen in the previous drawing. And I want to substitute these out for the correct ones. A couple ways I could do this. The long drawn out process is to come on every single line and go pick the correct assembly to use. And that's going to take forever. So the last time I worked on a project like this, I saved a set of assemblies. So we have a button up here that says save a set. If I click that on a previous drawing, I can save. And then now I can go browse to that set of assemblies to use for the intersection. And it's just stored in a folder on my hard drive. I've saved it in primary, secondary, intersection collection. And all I have to do is select this XML file. So what that's going to do is not only set them all here, it's going to import those assemblies into my drawing. So I don't have to go find them anywhere. It just automatically brings them in. So once I have these all set, I click on Create Intersection. And there is my short piece of intersection. Now I'd want to extend these out further. But if we look right here, we see that my curb returns are projecting correctly. They're not just following the 12 foot width all the way around. Show you the difference here the old way. With a bad assembly, I've got lanes overlapping other lanes, but then over here on this one, they don't. Now, if I take a look at the corridor properties, or better yet, modify a region, let's see. 